Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at the NMI VMG site. So we'll go through some of the basic things and we'll start by logging in. So you log in by going to your URL slash WP dash admin and this will take you to the login page where you'll put in the uh, username and password that we give you. <clears throat> then it will take you here to the back end and the stuff on the right is not the stuff that we're going to talk about. I'm just going to go down the line through these items on the left hand side and we'll just go through all of those things. I'll tell you how they work and this should get you started in updating things as you go if you need to. So I'm going to open another tab so I can have a tab open where I can look at what the site actually looks like. So <clears throat> we'll just go down the line. So let's start with home updates. This is where your plugins are located and where you can update those plugins. It's taking a minute to get there, but they're right here. So you can select them all and update them. I'm not going to do that now for the sake of time, but we also check our sites regularly. So every site is checked several times a month, at a couple times a month, and we go through and update those plugins also. So not something you have to worry about. If you never want to worry about it, you don't have to, but you can update them if you want whenever you come into your site. Moving on to posts, you have blog posts on here, and <clears throat> looks like we just published a blog post an hour ago. So Maybe you don't need a whole lot of help with this, but if you have a post, you would just come into posts, click add new here or add new here. And let's just take a look at this one. So this works just like any word processing would work that uh, like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word or anything like that. It has all these little buttons you can bold, italicize, bullet points. You've got some stuff bolded. You've got you've got your text here. You can make, you know, some of the text bigger or smaller by using this. You can insert a picture into your post through Add Media. Insert any of these pictures, or you can upload them and then insert them. You can hyperlink. You can link to a previous post. So if I click on that little wheel there, then I can click to a page within your site or a previous post, or I can put in any URL right there and link anywhere I want. You can create categories here. So I'm going to open this in a new tab and show you can create categories. So I can create a category here, give it a name and make it a pair, make certain categories parent categories and then if I want to they'll show up right here and I can select those categories. Then you can come here to featured image and it'll say add featured image if there isn't one. You can uh, either upload one or choose one that's already in your library and that is how you can see or how you have that picture at the top there. So that's that's the most things that you need to know on here. So yeah, you've got a there is a hyperlink right here to the contact page. So you've got that within that post. You put the title there and you can click right here to see what it looks like. So if I want to check out what it looks like, there it is. And those are the main things that you need to know there. You can reorder your posts or whatever you want to do. So moving on to media. And yeah, so when you back to the posts, they'll just show up. You don't have to do anything. So once you hit publish, it will just show up on your blog page right here. So you can see that that one is already there. And then I can click on it from there. So you don't have to worry about anything there. Media is... where all of your photos or any PDFs are located, things like that. And you can add media through here. You can change the size or edit them through here if you want or give them a link, anything like that. And if you need 
like you saw within posts, if you need to add a media item into a page, the media is already there, but this is just one place where you can see it all together. So let's move on to forms. <clears throat> you have a contact form here, and that's what appears right here. It's pretty simple, but we'll take a look at how it's made and if you ever want to change it. So contact, you can just click on it, and there's all your fields. So you've got name, email, subject, and then a message. So those things are just added through these fields over here. So under advanced field, that's where you have name, date, time. And so if you just click on this, it's just going to add a name right there. And if I want to edit it, I can come in here and I can make it, I can take the last name away if I just want it to be a first name. I can change the, la the field label, so what it's called. I can change it from saying name. I can make it a required field. And I can rearrange it so I can drag this elsewhere or I can just delete it. So you can add more fields through here if you want and you can rearrange, you can edit what this says, you can make them required however you would like. So then if you go to form settings, <clears throat> this is where you can add a notification. So right now if someone sends you, submits a form on your site, it's going to go to an email is going to be sent to whoever has an administrator login. If you would like to add another email here, I would just go ahead and duplicate this. So you would click duplicate, it's going to duplicate your notifications and then come in here and <clears throat> change the email. So just put whatever email you want those to send to and the, the entire content of that form submission will be sent to whatever email you put here. So if you want to send that to a personal email, then all the fields will be sent there. And then you can, <clears throat> from here, you can go to entries here, or you can go to entries here and see who has, who has submitted them. So that's where they're located. But if you have it sent to your email, then you'd never actually have to come in here and look at them here. But they're here, or you can have it sent to your email. You can preview the form. It doesn't look formatted exactly the same way it does on your site. Obviously, you can see it doesn't look the same, but it gives you a general idea. <clears throat> so that's the main stuff with forms. If you want to add more, you can always do that. And they are just added within your page through they're they're already there at the top. So I'll show you. We'll go to we'll move on to pages and I'll show you. So pages is next, and that's how we've created <clears throat> your digital advertising, your blog, your contact, and about us page. These are all through pages. So let's look at that. Uh, digital advertising, I think. Yeah, that's the page I wanted to look at. So you've just got content here. So if you ever want to change what is on here, this is where you'd come in and change it. <clears throat> and you don't have a featured image or anything at the top, but you see digital advertising because it's your title has that because it's right here. And it's got that big lettering and then these are all in header two so they're just like slightly smaller so you can see that it's in heading two and the rest is in paragraph form so if you ever want to come in here and change anything at all then you would change whatever you wanted to change and then click update and then you're done so within here if you ever want to add a picture or if you wanted to add that form you could come in click select a form you only have the one and then you will want to deselect these because you don't want to display the form title or description and then click insert form and wherever your cursor was it's just going to add the code right there so obviously we don't want to put that right there and then you'll hit update and you can bold italicize like I said bullet number anything there and if you want to add a new page <clears throat> You can click add new and then I can show you how to add that page to your menu up here though if you do add things to your menu bar you're just going to want to be careful because it's going to get too long up here and it's going to run into your title and that's not going to look very good so <clears throat> you probably would just if you're going to add items you know you'll just add them underneath one of these main heading things but I can show you how to do that when we get there. I don't think that you have comments on your blog right now. So that's what that would be. So you don't need to worry about that. Homepage areas. This is what on your homepage are all these little sections. 
as you can imagine, these are called homepage areas, the different areas of your homepage. So you've got the slider at the top. This is just going to be short code and I'll show you what the slider looks like. <clears throat> so it's just short code right there. And then you've got your blog. <clears throat> And that's also got short code. So we've just got the title, latest posts, and the short code. And then, yeah, that's all we have there. The full media plan probably has a little bit of text there. So yeah, we've got full media plan. So how this, this section was created, full media plan like that. So we've got a nice, we've got a nice thing going where <clears throat> you've got kind of a white background and then a dark background alternating. So if you do end up adding a homepage area, you might just want to keep that in mind as as you go. But this is where you could update any of the wording. So if you want to update the wording on here, you can always come in here to the homepage areas and change it. So I've got everything is centered nice nicely on that main page. And then I've got this in heading one. I've got this just in paragraph and then this is hyperlinked to the, the accurate page and then it's also formatted as a button and we've also got all of it formatted as white text so everything is formatted as white text because we've got that dark background so scrolling down is where you create that background so <clears throat> if you wanted to put an image in the back you can come in here select an image and then the color is here so if you always want to copy and paste this color if you want to use it again it's right there because it's not exactly black it's a little bit of a different color and then slide this bar all the way to the left to make it totally opaque or all the way to the right to make it totally transparent so you got that all the way to the right and then you always want to select yes on padding so that it has a little bit of extra space around the words here, otherwise it's not going to look right. So I'll just go ahead and make a new one just real quick to show you how you would do that, but it's pretty much the same exact thing. So you would give it some sort of title, this isn't going to show up, but then whatever you put here will show up. So how I would do this would be, I would center it. <clears throat> I would make this heading one and then this is going to become, I have to hyperlink it to wherever I want to hyperlink. So a page within, <clears throat> and then I also have to format it as a button so that it shows up as a button. And then I want all of this to be white text. So if I didn't, if I just wanted to put it on a white background, then all I'd have to do is click padding yes and then I don't then I wouldn't obviously not want this to be white text because it's on a white background but like I said you could copy and paste that code for the color I don't remember what it was I didn't copy and paste it but you can you can and then slide this all the way up and I would just click publish but I'm not gonna do that because I don't really want to go through and delete it so but <clears throat> I think you get the idea. And if I want to delete it, I'd come to trash, hit trash, and then it's going to show up in this trash folder where I can either restore it or delete it permanently. And they have to be reordered through this button reorder. And you can drag them to place them however you want. And then that's how you reorder them. So that's homepage areas. You're probably not going to change anything, but that's just so you know how, if in case you ever wanted to. Genesis is a theme that builds your website and appearance. There are two things we want to talk about here. Widgets and menus. So let's start with widgets. Here we have what's in your header. And you've got that. You've got your menu that we'll talk about in a minute. <clears throat> I'm not sure what else you have. Uh, this just allows the homepage areas to show up, so you don't need to worry about that. I'm trying to see if we have anything in the footer. Okay, so yeah, your contact information down here. 
that's in your footer. So if this ever needs to change, if your hours change or your phone numbers change, that's where it's located. So in your footer one, I can come in here and change the address, phone number, hours, any of that, and then just click save when you're done. This functions just like pages, just like homepage areas. It all looks the same like that. And then <clears throat> this has your featured posts, so it has your latest posts. So if you want to change any of the formatting here, feel free to do that. I'm I'm not going to change anything because I think it looks good the way it is, but that's where that's located, and then you would always hit save if you wanted to change. And then you've got a menu at the bottom. So the way that these items work, where everything is placed right now, it looks good. And so if you get to messing with too many things in the widgets, you may not be happy with the way it looks, but I'm just showing you so that you know. And so if you do want to add, let's say, a social media menu or something, if you create a new menu with social media items, then I would put it in footer two. So I'd come select whatever item you want, a form, a custom menu, whatever you've got over here. Select where you want it to go and click add widget. Once I get there, I've got to select pages and hit save. Or I can delete it or I can rearrange it and put it somewhere else. I can even put it elsewhere down here. But I don't want that, so I'm going to delete it. And you can do that with any of these items over here. So you can add visual through visual editor. I can add that anywhere and I can add more text like this. But again, the formatting might be off. But that's just so that you know kind of where everything's located if you do need to change hours or something. So then let's talk about menus. This is where I've got your home menu, these items here. So you've got your main items and then underneath the full media plan is where I have these sub items. So if you ever do uh, create a new page, it's going to show up over here under most recent or view all or you can search and then you can select that and then add it to the menu. It'll show up there at the bottom and then you can put it wherever you want. You can make it a sub menu item of any of these, or you can change the, what it's titled as. So if you named the page full media plan, but you want the navigation label up here to look different, then you can change it and type whatever you want right there. <clears throat> so you can rearrange these by dragging them wherever you want and then just hitting save whenever you're done. But again, like I said, if you add any main menu items, if you add a sub menu item, it's not going to make any of this look bad but if you add a new main menu item it's going to come much further over here and it's not going to look as nice so if you need help with something in the future with that let us know and those are those are the main things there that I think you need to know so let's move on plugins are what are used to create your website probably don't need to worry about anything there those help you be able to add blogs or we have separate plugins for different things and you probably aren't going to need to add anything there. So on users, I believe we've created an admin here, one. And so if we need to create another one, we can do that. But this is where if you come in, this is where you would change your password. If you wanted to change your password, this is where you'd come in and do that. And tools, settings, SEO, not things that you're, you're probably going to worry about or need to know about. So I won't go over those. Duplicator is what we used to launch your website. There's nothing you need there for sure. Moving on to Slider Revolution. This is what was created here at the top of your page. And since you have something that some people will change these out and make these say different things, but I believe you're probably going to keep this the same. I'm not going to go over this too in depth because you have a really complex slider and you're probably not going to update or change these items here. These slides are have a lot of they have a lot of layers and they have an animation that makes them do what they do. This is where this is located. So if you did want to change 
the font or the size of the font or the color, the alignment of things, the animation. You can do that. You can rearrange your slides by dragging them. You can make them invisible by clicking this red item and it makes it invisible without deleting it. <clears throat> if you want to If you wanted to add your slider somewhere, this is where the, so embed slider, this is where you'd get the short code to embed it somewhere. So you can copy and paste it. It's also located in that homepage area that says slider. You could copy and paste it from there as well. But I don't really think you're, you're planning on changing much on this slider, but this is where it's located. And these are, <clears throat> the individual slides and if you want to create your own slide a good place to start would be to duplicate a slide and then kind of play around with it and you can always click this and make it invisible while you're working on it and you can add shapes and then through each of these screen sizes you have to make sure that it fits within these borders and bounds and so you have to change the size of everything and then save it but again <clears throat> and the animation for all these items are down here so again I don't think that you're going to go through and change much of this so I'm not going to go over this much more but if you want more help here you can always let us know moving on to WP Google map this you have a map in one of your homepage areas I think or no, you have it on your contact page, that's right. <clears throat> so it's right there. So let's go to manage locations. This is where you have your location. If your location ends up changing, this is how you would come in and edit it. So we've got your address here, and whenever you start typing in something here, it fills in the rest of this. So you don't have to know the latitude and longitude, you just have to have the right address, and it'll fill it in for you. And that's it. So you would just change the address if you needed to change it. Save location. So let's say you needed to add a second location. You add a, another location or something. It's going to bring you to this same page, give it a title. And then you just start typing in an address, like I said, it's going to come up with something and then it'll fill it in for you. And then all you have to do is hit save location. Then if you want to add a new map, you can add a new map and then give it a title. Decide how wide you want it on the, whatever page you're placing it, the height in pixels, how far in on the map you want to zoom. And then that location, if you added a second one, would be here and you could select it. But let's look at the map that you already have. And again, if there was two locations, they would show up there and you could select them both if you had just created one. So you've got, we've got your map zoomed in at a level 16. We've got your height. We've got everything set up just right so that it looks like this. And when you scroll over it, it doesn't zoom or do anything weird. And it looks great where it is. So, and then the way that we added that was, if you look at manage maps, it's right there. And again, you've got that short code. So if we were to go into that contact page, it's going to, it's going to have short code for a form and then sh or short code for the map, then a, a little bit of text here with the email and then your form short code. And yeah, pods admin is just what we use to create the homepage areas. You're, you don't really need to mess with anything on there because we've got that set up just fine for you. So those are the main things. And that's how you would update information on there. And if you need help with things further, you can, you can always contact us and we'll help you if there's something that wasn't covered clearly enough or you need more help with something so just let us know but that should get you started on those things and hopefully get you updating all the things that you're hoping to be able to update.